Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin with an open box on some ancients. So lots of the ancients I get in are kind of noops, but occasionally I send some stuff in. Uh, and look at this guy right here. You can see his name, A L B, right? I, then those two letters together make an N, right? Albin, and then this looks like the C A E S Caesar, right? Is that what that looks like to you? To me. Uh, Claudius Albinius, AD 195, 197, only a couple years. You know, pro tip, if they were there for two years, their coins might be scarce. AU condition, strike, 4535, uh, and as Caesar. So, interestingly enough, so what happened, I actually sent an economy box, and so this, but uh, this had the full details listed on it. So, they made an adjustment, and they charged me the full price for this one. Uh, because it was above the pay grade, it was more expensive. That happens sometimes. You guys ask about that once in a while. If I get a mistake that it's obvious to them that I screwed up, you know, there's things that are borderline, right? You have price limits, and so if you're over the price limit, sometimes they'll go ahead and make an adjustment and charge you the extra. Um, there's no under the price limit thing. This is only an over thing, uh, and this so this coin actually is. Um, I think probably an $800 coin, pretty expensive. The rest of these coins, so what we did is I had a bunch of ancients that were just kind of nice looking or something more interesting uh, that are inexpensive and I decided to go ahead and get them certified and I did the less expensive rate and so what happens on the less expensive rate is you don't get the full description. You get a description that looks like this, Roman Empire, Severus Alexander, AD 222-2235, AR, Denarius, Choice XF. So what they don't have on there is the description of what's on the coin. Uh, as Caesar, Reverse Minerva, there's no description here. Also, they don't put the weight on the coin, and they don't put the surface and strike quality on the coin. They just call it, uh, you know, a singular grade. So these coins, um, you know, it was just a price decision for me based on how much they cost and how much cost to send in. And that guy is naked. All right, so uh, most of the coins that I have in this box are relatively inexpensive, you know, 100 to 100 to $200 type coins so that we can have some fun, inexpensive ancients for y'all instead of some of those weird pricey electrums and stuff that I get in sometimes. Uh, and it's just kind of fun. And some of these guys are a little bit more scarce, like I mentioned before, that uh, um, Al Albinus is more scarce and here actually also Lucius Verus and I you know 161 to 169 I know it just sounds like I'm naming guys from Harry Potter but by the way you know she uses a lot of like uh, Latin names Roman names but uh, that's that's how that is so but uh, beautiful design on this denarius and just really an attractive coin and one of the fun things is about about ancients in general is that you can buy coins that have cool eye appeal they're fun you can kind of romanticize them they don't have to be expensive uh, and they don't have to be in high grade to look good right like here's a classic look at this portrait like when you think of a Roman coin this is the coin you think of look at that portrait like every every like token or metal that's been made into a uh, made in made just for fun it has a depiction of a dude who looks like this this is Trajan uh, also in a denarius there's a silver silver coin on the denarius and uh, pretty neat neat design overall on this guy here this one is uh, they called it choice VF Trajan 98 to 117 AD Trajan might be a little bit pricier than some of the other guys, but next up we have, uh, oh, so this denomination, this bronze coin that's uh, kind of the size of a half dollar, not really a big thick coin, but pretty big, uh, it's called an AS, AS. And um, they're actually really popular when they have a patina to them. People actually don't mind these green patinas on these older coins. And once again, you can kind of get used to seeing uh, the lettering on coins after a while. And some of them are more clear than others. You know, the bigger the coin, usually the better the lettering. Libertas, 
on this guy here. You can see part of the lettering on that side. Nerva, 96 to 98 AD, fine condition. We're going to have our track shoes on today. Did I mention that? We're going to keep moving pretty quick. All right, the next size down from this, from the as, is uh, a bronze coin known as a Dupondus. And also a bronze coin. And so you can get these cool green patinas. And this is Commodus from 177 to 192. I was going to say, is Commodus the crazy one? And then I thought, you know how many of these guys were crazy? Like more than one of them. So that little statue that she's holding there is, uh, you know, it's got a wreath for victory in the wings. That is uh, Nike, also known as Victory, also known as Mercury. There's lots of different names for the little statue. And so, you know, the Romans and Greeks are funny because... Well, the Romans are funny. The Greeks didn't have anything to do with it because the Romans came after the Greeks. And they're like, no, our, our Roman culture is so superior. And basically, they just used all of the Greek culture and changed the names. And they're like, Psh, yeah, but we're Roman. We see we change the name of your god to a different name, and therefore it's not the same thing. All right, so this one's a little bit bigger. This is the as. And this is Severus Alexander. And, of course, the lettering is a little hard around the edges on this guy. And GC called this a very fine. But once again, you know, I kind of picked out coins that I thought had really neat looking uh, portraits on them. And something to be just kind of nice to own as, as a Roman coin goes, as an ancient goes. You know, and just the details up close are cool. You know, the throne and how, how well that's done up. Just very, very neat things for collectors. Because I know some of you are are just kind of new to the to the ancient world. Okay, speaking of ancients that are really fun, um, some of you know right away what this design is, others not, not so much. Uh, this coin is a bronze pruta from one of the governors of Judea, right? And it's kind of rough, admittedly, but uh, people collect these anyways because this is a coin of Pontius Pilate under Tiberius. Just call that a VG, but always a popular coin. Super easy to find a home for any coins from uh, any of the bronze prudas. The widow's mite is, this is technically not considered the widow's mite, although it's the same coin. They don't know exactly what the widow's mite was as far as the time period goes, though. They usually use the other design. They usually don't use the Pontius Pilate coins, which I find somewhat interesting. Okay, so I don't get as much into the later Roman Empire. Uh, so some of these guys are really um, interesting. You don't, you know, you see them and then they put a name on there and you're like, who's that? Uh, and, but anytime you see a portrait like this, usually, you know, this is will be a victory or a slavery kind of thing, right? So you've got, usually you'll have a slave, a soldier, um, on the one side, and then you can see he's got, it looks like his staff, uh, para, parapet, what is that term, parapet, paramount, no, and it looks like he's got his whip in the other hand, and uh, so, uh, so this is Arcadius from the Eastern Roman Empire, 383 to 400 uh, AD, and here, if I'm not mistaken about this, it looks like he's being crowned, there's like a hand coming from heaven. These guys never had egos. That's my favorite thing about leadership in the Roman days. Uh, and leadership today, whoa. So this is kind of the new true view thing that they had going on. Clear view is I think what they called it. Uh, years ago when you had smaller coins like this or coins that were more fragile, they wouldn't have holded them. But now they've decided to go, hey, let's let's go ahead and use this little uh, free, free box that we have, the... Um, the method that you see, you'll see people get these little clear boxes and put things in them. And uh, this is actually, I think, one of the only Greek coins that I sent in. Just a little guy, kind of fun. Uh, a hemi obol, so half an obol, and this is 450 to 380 BC, Korea, uh, Kasaloba. Kind of a fun piece. You know, I just thought, let's send in something small and different. And uh, a neat, neat portrait. 
I got to go find my Greek book and uh, double check the back of this and see what critters on there because um, I'm pretty sure that's a critter on that guy. And last but not least, we're going back in time one more time. Uh, this is a very popular design. People will know these all the time when you see them. And this, this one really fascinated me for a couple reasons. So um, the uh, Achaemen Achaemenid Empire, 5th century BC, uh, a Siglos. And what's interesting about this piece is, you know, see those kind of spots where it's sticking through? And it's got a different coloration, but right there, you know, there's like a chop mark, but then it looks kind of different underneath. They're calling this one an uh, plated siglos and an ancient forgery, which is pretty wild. So something that's a little bit different, of course, is that there's forgeries, ancient forgeries. There's a couple different names for them and styles, but the, they'll actually go ahead and certify them because it's an ancient. It's contemporary, and then they say uh, countermarks on there. Uh, but the contemporary pieces are generally collectible as contemporary counterfeits um, because they're from the same time period. That's what the word contemporary means. So kind of kind of a fun, fun piece. Uh, and last but not least, I had a, uh, there's a guy named uh, Vitellius who's a really rare one. And this one they actually just said not genuine on. So he was one of those 80, 69 guys. So uh, for those of you who don't know, there's four, I think four rulers during 8069. And let's take a look just so we get a feel for, well, get a feel for, this one's hard. I mean, uh, this one they did not certify as a contemporary counterfeit, which I find interesting. They just said it's not genuine. And uh, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Looking at this, um, yeah, that's a tough one. Wow. All right, guys. Well, I can't argue with those guys. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.